Hello drone racers. Today we're going to answer our first subscriber question and it's about these two drones right here. We've got the Ishin E 10S which you know I love if you've been watching the videos at all and we also have an Inductrix FPV. So we this was the first tiny whoop that we actually bought here on Drone Racer 101 and it was great at the time, but I've not really picked it up much, mainly because I don't have the module to connect it to my Tyrannus. But I got a great question submitted by Francis Drone, and he sent us a link to a video where what they're showing is the Inductrix FPV has a very high low voltage cutoff. So at 3.9 volts, I think it was, we'll be showing the video here now, um, at 3.9 volts it just stops and I noticed this doesn't have a very long flight time and it shows a way to fix that but the question was do we need to do that same fix to the E10S does it have a low voltage cutoff and I don't think it does but we're actually gonna find out today and we're gonna do a little battery testing while we're at it because I made a couple modifications to do some special tests so what we're going to do first is the straight flight of the Inductrix FPV with one of the Inductrix FPV batteries. Now here's it's actually a third party Strix battery. It's a 2550C. So it's comparable. It's actually a little less than what we're flying by default. But we will, what we're going to do first is check the voltage. We're going to fly it and then we're going to check the voltage again. Get that somewhere you can see it. So I believe I've got these charged right to 4.2 volts. So we just have to very carefully, there we go, 4.21 volts. So there we go. So we're gonna go fly this and see how long it flies. So either something is wrong with this battery or we've got a problem with the quadcopter because it only flew for about a minute, which was really, really bad. So we're gonna test and see 3.9 volts. So you know what? It went down to 3.9 volts in no time flat. We're gonna try another battery just to see what happens. Okay, so we pretty much had the exact same result. It went right at a minute and the battery was dead. Well, it, I won't say the battery was dead. It dropped out of the air so yeah 3.9 volts that's just super high for these so those are still ready to go now we're going to do the same test with the uh, Ishin E10S so we've got a charged battery here now this is 45C it's a better battery but honestly between the 30s and the 45s for what we're doing hovering I don't think we have any bit of a difference so we're going to make sure we're just about charged here. There we go, so almost 3.2 volts, enough to actually do the test. So now we're gonna fly it and see what happens. Okay, you could see in that video, it flew three times longer. Now these are, to be fair, these are newer batteries. These are from last fall, but they don't have very many flights on them. And these are pretty much brand new. I think these actually have more flights on them themselves though, really than the others. So it got down to 5.3 volts. So that's a big difference. There's just no regulator in this. This flew until it just couldn't hold itself in the air. Or if there is a regulator, it's way, way lower. So yeah, that, that shows the main point we wanted to see is there's no need with the Ishin E10S to do any kind of voltage regulator mod to make sure it doesn't cut off too early. But I want to try one more thing. I actually want to try connecting one of the Inductrix FPV batteries to this because theoretically this is 200 and five milliamps versus 150 in this one. Um, this one's a lower C rating. What I've done to make this happen is I actually rigged up this little wire. I had this coupler from the uh, from some custom wires I made, some custom wiring harnesses I made for the Inductrix batteries to be able to use them with my regular charger and put the JSTJH end on it, I think. And I'm gonna connect this. So. 
One of the mods I've heard that I'm going to do in an upcoming video is these connectors are all coming off. Um, I've heard if just changing from these very tiny connectors can improve it a lot. So what I'm going to do is make all of my quadcopters use the same connector. Um, so I've got the Ishin E10C, the E10S, the Inductrix. They're all going to use the same connector so I can interchange all of the batteries. Now we'll see what happens for this partially because the wire that this came with is super tiny. I mean it's super tiny. So that might hurt and I'm going to be going through several adapters. So I've got to connect this to here and this to here and then this actually connects on. So I haven't decided what connector I'm going to put on everything yet that I need to determine before I do it. But if these batteries are good, it's actually really easy to use them in this. Um, you put this here and then you just need to squeeze a little bit and it'll actually slide right through there and it'll hold in nice and tightly and it's good in, in the center. So this style of battery will work really well with the E10S if they end up being a good option and we'll go find out. Okay, so that was pretty conclusive. That, that was about three and a half minutes of runtime, which is much better. We're gonna check the voltage real quick. We're right at 3.4, which is perfectly acceptable for these batteries. That's just fine. It's maybe a little lower than I should go, but I flew it until it was dead, and normally I wouldn't go quite that low. Um, so the connector is bad, but that's not the worst part of these because I'm running through all kinds of adapters and connections and, and extra weight. And this is about the worst scenario you could expect on this, but it still did just fine on this. The Ishin uh, E10S does not have a low voltage regulator. It'll just fly until it dies, which is just fine in my opinion. The Inductrix FPV does, and that's one of the reasons I didn't fly this is it just didn't fly very long at all so now that I know that and there's a video which I'll make sure is linked down below on how to fix that I'm going to try it because if I can fly that and get better better flight times I'm going to do it I'm also going to fix all these garbage connectors and change everything probably to this JSTPH connector on everything I actually stole the one I'm using here from one of my batteries um, if you want to see what the inside of these batteries looks like, that, that, that's it. I just took the connector right off of there, and I'm going to make sure I get this covered up right away so I don't accidentally short that out. But it is repairable if I need to. Um, but to have that connector, it's a little harder to change on this, but we'll cover that in another video. If you found this useful or informative or interesting or whatever, give us a like and comment down below with what else you want to see us try. If we miss something that I should have done here, Besides changing the connectors, I think I think this was pretty good though. Make sure you subscribe so you see next time what it looks like when we change the connectors on all of these. And we have several additional battery tests that we have planned coming up soon. So we're looking forward to that and a lot of things coming. We're just getting started. All right, drone racers, next time.